Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and uh, let us start our new topic and the new topic is the electrophoresis. So, electrophoresis is a technique which has been used to analyze the, uh, the biomolecules such as the protein or the DNA and to separate them based on the charge or the molecular weight or all other um, uh, biochemical properties. So, let us start discussing about the electrophoresis. So, as the name suggests, the electrophoresis means the study of or the separation of the molecule when they are running into the electric field. So, you can imagine that you have a biomolecule which is or you have a charged molecule containing Q charge and it is running into an electric field. So, electrophoresis is an uh, electrokinetic process which separates the charge particle in a fluid using the field of the electric charge. It is most often used in life sciences to separate the protein molecules or the DNA molecule and can be achieved through the several different processes, procedures depending on the type and size of the molecules. So, before getting into the detail of the electrophoresis and how to perform the electrophoresis. Let us first discuss what is the basic principle of the electrophoresis so that you will be able to understand each and every factor which is influencing the uh, electrophoretic uh, moment of or the moment of the molecule within the electric field so that you will be able to utilize those factors to bring the better separation. So, you can imagine that a charge particle Q is moving in an electric field E and when a charged particle is moving in an electric field, it is actually going to experience a electrophoretic force which is going to be uh, in the field of in the direction of the electric field and the quantity is going to be the F is equal to Q E which is where the E is the strength of the electric field and Q is the charge of this particular particle. But when a molecule is moving in an electric field and if the material through which this molecule is moving is also is uh, actually going to experience the frictional forces, the frictional forces are going to be opposed the movement of this molecule into the, uh, into the electric field and the uh, frictional forces are going to be equivalent to the F v which is where the F is the frictional constant. So, F is the frictional coefficient and the v is the velocity of the electrophoretic mobility. This moment of a spherical uh, object through a liquid media of the viscosity n, the friction of coefficient F is given by the formula 6 pi nita r v which means if a, a molecule is moving through a liquid media which is suppose the gel, then the viscosity and the friction are going to play, take place and as a result the frictional force, uh, the frictional coefficient is going to be equivalent to, frictional forces are going to be equivalent to the 6 pi nita r and v. And now let us imagine that this molecule will stop uh, making the any kind of uh, movement. So, the place where the movement of a spherical molecule of the viscosity n the friction coefficient f is given by the uh, 6 pi nita r v and the place where the particle will have the both these forces equivalent or both of these forces are equivalent that is the place where the molecule is going to stop the movement and that place the q e which means the electrophoretic forces as well as the frictional forces are going to be equivalent. So, at this place the electrophoretic mobility will be given by the formula V is equivalent to Q by 6 pi nita r. Whereas, the Q is equivalent to the Z e which means if the molecule is made up of, of the biomolecules, you can have the you can calculate the charge simply by having the valency which means where the z is the valency and the e is the electronic charge. So, if you multiply the both the thing you are going to get the charge where so the electrophoretic mobility can be expressed as the z e by the 6 pi nita r v. So, what you see is the z e 
by the 6 pi nita r and what you see here is that the this component is actually a constant which means it is not going to be dependent on to the molecule which means the V is directly proportional to the Z by the R. So, hence the electrophoretic mobility is directly proportional to the charge which is this and the inversely proportional to the viscosity of the media, size and shape of the molecule. In the case of the relative mobility, it is directly related to the charge by radius of the molecule. That is what we have said right, V is equivalent to Z by E which means V is directly proportional to the Z and V is inversely proportional to the 1 by R. So, this is R actually which means and R is directly proportional to the mass of the molecule. So, for a globular protein the radius of the molecule is directly related to the molecular mass of the macromolecule which means the relative mobility V is directly proportional to the charge and inversely proportional to the mass. So, this is the uh, relationship between the electrophoretic mobility and the charge of the mass can be exploited to separate the different types of molecule because the different molecules are going to have the different charges and they are also going to have the different masses. And this, sort, this is the way the people have thought that if we resolve the molecules in the electric field, the, we can be able to separate the molecule utilizing this particular property. So, for uh, for resolving the molecules, they have designed different types of the electrophoretic apparatus because what you are supposed to understand is that you are interested to do the electrophoresis, but you are not interested to do the electrolysis. Electrolysis is, is a process where the molecule will run through the electric field and, one, and then they will reach to their respective uh, uh, electrodes and there the molecule is going to be broken down into the individual atoms and that is how the molecule is going to be broken down with the help of the electric field. So, th that is called as the electrolysis whereas, in the case of electrophoresis the molecule is always remain intact and it runs through the electric field so that it will be get separated from the other molecule based on the charge by mass. So, the first apparatus what people have designed is called as the moving boundary electrophoresis. So, in this method the electrophoresis is carried out in solution without a supporting media. The sample is dissolved in buffer and the molecule moves to their respective counter charge electrode. Sample is loaded in the middle of the U-tube and then the apparatus is connected to the external power supply. The charge molecule moves to the opposite electrode as they pass through the refractometer a change can be measured. As the desirable molecule passes sample can be taken out from the apparatus along with the buffer. So, in a moving boundary electrophoresis what they have done is they have made a U color tube okay? and in this U color tube they have put the cathode on one side and the anode on the other side and this is connected through a sample loading uh, chamber. So, from this chamber you can actually load the samples, then the sample is going to be filled into this uh, middle tube and then they are going to connect the cathode and anode to the external power supply. So, what will happen is the positively charged molecules are going to run towards the cathode whereas, the negatively charged molecules are going to be moved towards the anode and on the terminal end of the uh, these tubings they have put the refractometers on both the sides. So, what will happen is refractometer is a is a apparatus which actually measures the change in the refractive index of a particular solution. So, what will happen is as soon as the molecule will pass through this refractometers there will be change in the refractive index of this particular buffer and as a result they will know that when a particular molecule is coming out, but that is very very ambiguous that is not very accurate and, and 
on the other hand there are multiple problems when they were going through with the moving boundary electrophoresis what are these problems the resolution of the technique is very low due to the mixing of the sample as well as the overlapping of the sample component for example if you load the sample in the middle because all these is what you are doing in a buffer which is actually not having any supporting media so as soon as you turn on the uh, electric field uh, the ions are moving towards the, the towards the counter uh, electrodes but as soon as you turn off the power they all start uh, mixing together okay and because it is uh, happening in the uh, in the free media there will be a mixing of the samples there will be no separations and there will be no way that you know which molecule is moving or mo passing through the refractometer so because of that uh, it always have a problem of the ambiguity because you have to standardize very nicely so that you will know when the your molecule of interest is going through the refractometer so that you can actually put the pipette and you could be able to take out this sample from the moving boundary electrophoresis apparatus on the other hand the electrophoresis technique is not good to separate and analyze the complex biological sample instead it can be used to study the behavior of the molecule in a electric field which means this apparatus was good enough to study the behavior of the molecule which means it will say whether the molecule will move towards the cathode or mo molecule will move towards the anode but it was never been the good enough to separate the complex biological mixture for example if you load the uh, e coli lysate or mammalian cells lysate it will not be able to resolve the samples because for resolving you don't have anything where supporting media so that you, it will actually going to uh, experience any kind of frictions or any kind of uh, you know separation uh, of the molecules so because of that the moving boundary electrophoresis was not very popular and then people have started developing the new techniques then they have developed the zone electrophoresis so in this method an inert polymeric support media is being used between the electrode to separate and analyze the sample the supporting media used in zone electrophoresis are absorbent paper gel of starch agar and polyacrylamide the major advantage of the presence of supporting media is that it minimizes mixing of the sample and immobilization of the molecule after the electrophoresis it makes the analysis and the purification of the molecule from the gel easier than the moving boundary electrophoresis so the major change what people have done when they were moving towards the zone electrophoresis is that they have started putting the some kind of supporting media which means they are putting some polymeric substances or some kind of uh, gel so that the molecule will Im immobilized on to those so because of that the molecule will get separated and you can be able to visualize them because they are immobilized on to the uh, supporting substance and then you can stain and destain those supporting substances to know what will be the pattern and then accordingly you can optimize the uh, the separation techniques and as accordingly you can be able to achieve the better purifications the substance said what they were using for the supporting media are the paper the starch agar and the polyclamide accordingly the moving boundary gel electrophoresis is also been called as the gel electrophoresis and within the gel electrophoresis you have the two mode in which you can be able to perform the gel electrophoresis when is when is called as the horizontal gel electrophoresis which means you are performing the gel electrophoresis in the horizontal direction so the gel electrophoresis in this system performed in a continuous way the classical example of this is the agarose gel electrophoresis then you have the vertical gel electrophoresis so in a vertical gel electrophoresis you are performing the electrophoresis from top to bottom the electrophoresis in this system performed in a discontinuous way with the buffer in the upper and lower tank connected by the gel slab it has the multiple modification in the running condition to answer the multiple analytical questions so 
This zone electrophoresis is also been called as the gel electrophoresis and the gel electrophoresis can be performed in two different mode either the horizontal gel electrophoresis where the system is going to be continuous and the second is the uh, vertical electrophoresis where you are going to have the discontinuous system where the gel is being placed between the upper and the lower tanks. So, these are the components of the vertical gel electrophoresis where you have the gel cassettes, electrode chambers, then you have the tank where you are going to uh, place this, then you have to have the comb, then you have this uh, the electrodes or the power cord and then you have the power supply unit which is actually going to supply the desirable uh, power between the electrodes. So, these are the uh, electrodes what is being present into the electrode chamber. Uh, the reagents, the reagents what you are looking for the vertical gel electrophoresis. So, the buffer and the reagent for the electrophoresis, the different buffers and reagents with their purpose for vertical gel electrophoresis is as follows. The first thing what you need is the uh, timid or the NN, NN tetramethyl ethyl diamine and the timid is a catalyst, it catalyzes the uh, acrylamide polymerizations, then you require the ammonium persulfate or APS, it is an initiator of the acrylamide polymerization to together these two components are required to polymerize the acrylamide. Then you require the tris SCL, so tris SCL is required to prepare the running uh, as well as the gel casting buffers, then you have the glycine which is a component of the running buffer, then you have the bromophenol blue, so bromophenol blue is a tracking dye and it is required to monitor the progress of the gel electrophoresis, then you require the chromacy brilliant blue R250 which is a staining dye which is actually going to stain the polyacrylamide gel. Then you require the sodium dodecyl sulphate, sodium dodecyl sulphate or the SDS it is used to denature and provide the negative charge to the proteins and then you require the acrylamide. So, acrylamide is the monomeric unit used to prepare the gel and then you require the bisacrylamide which is the cross linker for polymerization of the acrylamide monomer to form the gel. Now, let us see how the acrylamide is going to be polymerized. So, what you do actually is you are actually always making a, uh, a gel solution which is actually the 30 percent acrylamide solution. So, in the 30 percent acrylamide solution what you do is you add the 29 grams of acrylamide and then 1 grams of the bis acrylamide and keeping these together when you are adding the timid and APS that actually is catalyzing the cross linking of the acrylamide monomer with the bis acrylamide. So, how the acrylamide is going to be polymerized is that you have the acrylamide and then you have the bis acrylamide and when you are incubating these with the timid and the APS, what happen is that the APS which is ammonium bisulfate in the presence of timid forms the oxygen free radicals and induces the polymerization of acrylamide monomer to form a linear polymer. These linear polymers are interconnected by the cross linking with the bis acrylamide monomer to form a three dimensional mesh with the pore. So, what happen is these acrylamide monomers are being polymerized, so they will form the fibers like this. So, because these two molecules are forming the radicals and suppose they form the radicals on one molecule, this radical radical is actually it, uh, interacting with each other and that is how they are actually making the uh, polymeric fibers and then these polymeric fibers are also being connected with the help of the bis acrylamide because the bis acrylamide has the cross linking uh, groups on the both side and that is how you are actually making a 3D mesh which is actually containing the pores in between and these pores are always being used for the biomolecule to the pass through. So, because of this mesh you can be able to uh, experience or you can be able to produce the friction for the different types of molecule and that is how the 
friction is going to play in separation of the molecule. So, because this mesh has the sizes of different sizes, the this mesh is going to play a kind of a separation filter or something like that. So, that it will actually going to help in getting the separation of the molecules. The size of the pore is controlled by the concentration of the acrylamide and the amount of bisacrylamide, which means if you increase the bisacrylamide concentration or if you increase the acrylamide concentration, you are actually going to decrease the pores because you will be keep putting more and more fiber and as a result, the pore size is going to be smaller and smaller, which means the you cannot be able to use a very, very highly cross-linked gel with a small uh, with, with, a, with a large protein because if you use the large protein, the large protein will not going to be, will not be able to enter into these pores and as a result it will be get excluded from the gel. In a vertical gel electrophoresis system, we cast two different types of gel, stacking gel and the resolving gel. First the resolving gel solution is prepared and poured into the gel cassette for polymerization, a thin layer of organic solvents such as butanol or the isopropanol is layered to on the top to stop the entry of oxygen. Why it is so? Because the oxygen neutralizes the free radicals and slow down the polymerization and makes the top layer smooth. After polymerization of the resolving gel, a stacking gel is poured and the comb is fitted into gel for construction of the different lanes for the sample. So, the running of a uh, vertical gel electrophoresis uh, as we, I think discussed, the, you need a gel cassette, then you need an electrode chamber, then you need a tank and what you do actually is that you first pour the resolving gel because these are the gel which is going to use for separation of the molecule and then on top of that you are actually going to put the stacking gel. The difference between the resolving and the stacking gel is in terms of the composition of the acrylamide as well as the pH of the buffer what you use for these two gels are also different. And then when you cast the resolving gel, you actually put the uh, a layer of the organic solvent so that it actually uh, helps in terms of the uh, polymerization of the acrylamide. The running of the gel. The sample is prepared in the loading die which contains the SDS which means the denaturating agents, beta mercaptoethanol which is actually going to break the disulfide linkages and you need and all these will be present in the glycerol because the glycerol is required to provide the density in the sample so that it facilitate the loading of the sample in the well. Now since these wells, so you can imagine that this is a typical well with where you have loaded the different types of samples. Since the, all the samples are filled vertically, there is a distance drift between the molecule at the top versus the molecule at the bottom in a lane. So, you can imagine that you have this is a lane where you have different types of molecules and all these molecules are having for example, a molecule number 3 and the molecule number R. All these molecules, imagine if the 3 and R of a same molecular weight, uh, even then there will be a drift of the uh, distances between the two because so if you resolve them without going through the stacking of, uh, of the sample or without putting them at the same place for running, uh, they will be having a drift. You can understand that simply by looking at the uh, racing track. So, if you see a racing track, what you see is that the, the, uh, the players are, are sitting at a very different location because all these different locations, the this uh, the diameter of the circle is different. But in this case, you don't have such options. So what you have to do is you by any mean you have to bring the three and the R together, and that's what you can do simply if you do a stacking of the sample. Now the question is how you can be able to stack the sample. So to stacking of the sample, you have to first put a, a stacking gel. So, so that is why the well has to be prepared in the stacking gel and you have to stack the sample. 
and why the stacking gel is actually doing the stacking because the pH of the stacking gel is 6.8 and at this pH the glycine is moving slowly in the front whereas the Tris SCL is moving very fast. So you can imagine that you have this well where this is the sample number 3 and this is the sample number R which is very very far away but these samples are present in a buffer which is actually having a composition of Tris SCL and glycine. So uh, and the pH of this gel is 6.8 which is actually the pH of the stacking gel. So at 6.8, the glycine is having the very, very low electrophoretic mobility. Because of that, there will be a blockage of glycine in the front. So the, you have a glycine which molecule which are sitting in the front and then you have the tris molecule which are actually uh, present in the from the top. So because of that, you can imagine that you are putting the molecules, the two molecules like the number 3 molecule and the R molecule between the like where the tris is going to be used as a plunger. So what happen is the tris is pushing the molecules whereas the glycine is not allowing these molecules to move as per their electrophoretic mobility. So because of that all the molecule will reach to this point and they will be able to uh, get stacked. But what happen is and this will happen because they will be keep running into the stacking gel for some time and during this period only the 3 and R are going to come together and they will form a single band which is actually going to contain the 3 and R together and that will happen while they are running into the stacking gel. But as soon as they will enter into the resolving gel, so after this they will enter into the resolving gel. So resolving gel has a pH of 8.8 .8, which means at this pH the glycine is now charged and it moves fast and now sample run as per their molecular weight because the SDS is going to provide them the equal negative charge. After the tracking dye reaches to the bottom of the gel, gel is taken out from the glass plate with the help of a spatula and it is stained with the Comasi Billion Blue R250, the dye stains protein present on the gel. So as soon as it enters into the stacking dye, this blockage of the glycine is going to be removed and as a result the proteins are the molecules are going to be resolved based on the molecular weight. The higher molecular weight are going to run slower and the smaller molecular weight are going to run smaller. And because you want to know how much the molecules are going to are traveling into the resolving gel, you are also using the tracking dye that is the bromophenol blue. And so bromophenol blue is a very, very small dye. So it runs in the front and as soon as it reaches to the end of the gel, you will be able to know that okay the electrophoresis is now over and then I can stop the gel and I can take out the gel and uh, the uh, I can do the staining and de-staining and to see what is the pattern of the gel. So this is all about the theoretical information of the electrophoresis, how uh, the history of the electrophoresis apparatus, how the apparatus is being uh, evolved by exploiting the or by uh, developing the different types of electrophoretic apparatus. So, but this is all the theoretical uh, knowledge. Now I would like to take you to my lab and I would like to show you a small demo how to uh, cast the gels and how to perform the electrophoresis. And in this uh, demo the students have uh, resolved the samples and then they have also shown you how to stain and de-stain. In this video we will demonstrate you how to run a SDS paint gel, and how to prepare various reagents required for the running of SDS paint gel, and what are the different uh, instruments we can use. So, here this is the gel casting stand. So, where we can use these glass plates. To prepare the gel. In between there is a space where we can pour our gel, gel solution. Then 
will keep for some time at least 20 to 30 minutes let it solidify then we will prepare uh, stacking gel then we will load the our uh, protein solution so here before doing that we need some reagents so what are those reagents the first reagent we need for this experiment is acrylamide so generally we will prepare acrylamide 30 percentage 30 percentage means 29 grams of acrylamide and 1 gram of bisacrylamide this both we can use 29 is to 1 ratio in 100 ml of water to get 30 percentage of acrylamide so both these are neurotoxic so we have to wear gloves always after this we have to prepare resolving gel for resolving gel we need 1.5 molar tris hcl ph 8.8 in addition to that we also need 10 percent as hds prepared in double distilled water and also 10 percent ammonium persulfate and also timid the role of the ammonium persulfate and timid we can see during preparation of gel they act as a catalyst after solidifying we have to use we have to prepare uh, stacking gel so stacking gel is nothing but composition is same but we can say it is a diluted it contains ph 6.8 tris hcl and remaining components same but in less quantities so after uh, preparing the gel we will load the marker and the protein which is denatured at 100 degrees celsius for 3 minutes after that we will fix this gel into this one we will keep keep in this reservoir then we will run we will connect to the power pack and run the gel so this is the overall introduction of how to uh, prepare a SDS page gel so let's start the preparing gel we will learn more things while preparing the gel before preparing the uh, resolving gel we have to prepare the casting uh, set up the casting gel so this is the glass plates this is very thin one so this is the main glass plate this is 1.5 mm glass plate uh, it is available in 1 mm glass plates also if you are uh, loading solution is less like uh, you want to load only 20 microliter 30 microliter then 1 mm gel is good enough but if you have extended volumes like uh, 70 microliter you can use 1.5 mm gel you have to arrange like this short plates on this plate and uh, the bottoms should be uh, equal then we have to put in this one this tray then we are going to keep like this so we have to check if we perfectly set up this one then there should not be any leakage but if there is any leakage your resolving gel may leak out and you will get nothing 
so in that case we have to check it uh, prior to pouring the gel so whether uh, uh, it is okay or not so i'm going to use milk water so just after checking the gel is there any leakages or not so we moved forward uh, for preparing a reserving gel so the composition is given in this slide please go through that slide This is just water. First, I used water. Uh, I am going to add sequentially 4 ml of water. Now, I have to add 3.3 ml of already prepared 30% acrylamide. Already in introduction, uh, I explained how much percentage we have to prepare and how much quantities of acrylamide and bisacrylamide need to take. So here uh, we have to add 3.3 ml of acrylamide solution, 30 percentage. So I have to adjust 300 microliter. The next component is 1.5 molar tris pH 8.8. We have to add 2.5 ml. Next component is SDS. Here, SDS uh, functions as uh, plays as dual role. Like one thing is that it gives negative charge, gross negative charge on the polypeptide chain. The next component we have to add is SDS. Ten percent is SDS. We have to add hundred microliter of SDS to resolving gel. It plays very crucial role in uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Like it imparts negative charge on the polypeptide chain so that uh, despite of their charge, they will move based on the molecular weight. So I am going to add SDS. The other important thing is that 10 percentage ammonium persulfate. Ammonium persulfate, which is catalyzed by the timid, provides uh, free radical species which accelerate the uh, forming mesh like mesh like shape in uh, acrylamide gel. Like it will catalyze forming the mesh. So this is the 10 percentage APS. I just add 100 microliter of 10 percentage APS to resolving gel. In final step, we have to add timid. Timid after finishing, after adding all the components at the end of the gel, we have to add timid because if you add earlier, it will quickly uh, facilitate the uh, polymerization so you cannot take uh, take out with the pipette so it, it complete it completely solidifies so that's why you have to add at the end of the solving so I, i'm gonna add uh, five microliter of uh, this 
timid which uh, catalyzes the ammonium persulfate ammonium persulfate in turn provides uh, free radical species and free radical species accelerate the polymerization this is the overall principle of this resolving guide so i will add we have to mix properly then add slowly at one corner so so after this we have to overlay with on the top layer we have to overlay with some solvent like uh, 2 butanol or isopropanol or with water so why we are doing this because if the gel is exposed to air then the oxygen from the air will interfere in the polymerization of the gel so we have to add either water or 2 butanol for this purpose now we have to check whether it is solidified or not so it is solidified now we have to remove uh, the overlay layer like we have used uh, uh, water so no need to remove if you are using isopropanol or butanol you have to remove that and wash with the milky water so now we will start preparing the uh, stacking gel the compositions are given in the video you have to add 3.4 ml of uh, water first next is 30 microliter of acrylamide Six thirty microliter of three uh, hundred fifty cl pH six point eight. Fifty microliter of timid and fifty microliter of SDS we have to add. At the end we have to add five microliter of timid.
we have to mix properly after adding the timid. And you just add that one corner. Next, we will keep calm. Now we will wait until the gel guard solidified, then we will shift to the buffer tank and then we will run the gel. While the stocking gel is solidifying, we have to prepare a sample for loading the uh, loading in STS pipe gel. So for that we have to prepare a loading die 10x or 6x loading die. It mainly contains 250 millimole of uh, millimolar tris pH 6.8 30 percentage uh, glycerol 10 percentage ESDS and 0.05 percentage of uh, bromopinol blue so here uh, we can add 10 millimole of DTT also as a reducing agent uh, SDS mainly works as imparting uh, negative charge on the polypeptide chain and DDT breaks down the disulfide parts. If you have a dimer which is uh, which you can see as a monomer in uh, SDS page. Suppose you have uh, 20 kDa, 20 kDa that means 40 kDa protein which is a dimer actually. You can see only 20 kDa band corresponding to that protein because uh, DTT breaks down the disulfide part and you can see only single band. If you want to see actual molecular weight, you have to run it on native phase where there is no reducing agent or no detergent. The other thing is uh, glycerol. While loading the gel, uh, since the protein solution is not that much dense, it may come out from well. So in order to prevent this thing, we have to load with the denser uh, uh, solution like uh, glycerol. So 30 to 50 percent glycerol is sufficient for uh, keeping the protein solution intact in the bottom of the well. So other thing uh, bromophenol blue. Bromophenol blue we use uh, for just uh, tracking the how much gel completed. So this is the loading time. So we have to take the protein solution. Uh, here we already prepared a 10 percentage of loading dye. So that means uh, this is 10x loading dye. We have to prepare 1x to mix with the protein solution. So this is 100 ml of uh, solution which uh, loading solution. We mix 10 microliter of loading dye to this protein solution. You can tap down or pipe at this protein solution. Then we have to heat it for three minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, so that the all the polypeptide chains, uh, I mean uh, dimers are, if any uh, multimers are present, they will break down, and we can see nice band. So I am going to heat this at 100 degrees Celsius for three minutes. This is the remaining of uh, stacking gel solution. So we can see it is solidified. So that means the stacking gel also got solidified. We have to remove that gel and uh, fix it into this uh, this one, and we have to keep inside the tank. So I just take out the gel.
so in uh, inside this tank we only have this side one you have to cover uh, other side also so for that we use a dummy plate just hold it tight and close this thing after that gradually adjust the gel length so just we have to fix like this once fixing here we have to add this uh running buffer the running buffer contains 15 grams of trees 72 grams of glycine and 5 grams of sds for 2 liters of solution one x solution so this is one x i already prepared i'm going to add we added in this tank but the main tank surrounding to this one we have to add up to the mark so for reference you can see here uh, for four gels we have to add till here the buffer we have to load outside this uh, gel so for two gels here uh, for one gel we can add like this this is the power pack where we can adjust the how many volts we want to run uh, the protein samples are ready we heated sufficient time now we have to load this so we have to remove the com carefully then first time going to load marker protein ladder next i will load sam once the loading goes over we have to fix to set it at 100 uh 70 volts as we can see uh, the it is almost over so we can take out the gel then we will stain and destain it generally what we will do is we will uh, there are two ways of staining and destaining process one is we can do quick staining like we have to heat it with the staining solution which contains kumasi brilliant blue and uh, along with uh, methanol and water so then we will try to destain with the uh, water uh, by heat but in another way the simplest simplest way is we will just uh, uh, stain the gel for 2 hours then we will destain overnight so i am going to show uh, the simplest way first we will stain in kumasi brilliant blue staining solution then we will destain in methanol water containing uh, sap so i am going to stop the uh, children then i will remove it i will show you how to remove the gel.
take out the last pairs. Here we have to be very careful while taking out gel, otherwise the short plates may grow. On a corner we have to take and lift the gel like this. We'll keep the gel in a staining box which is more or less a plastic one but it can sustain the so then I'm going to add staining solution I will keep it for a uh, rotation for on a shaker for at least two hours, then we will uh, de stain over. So once the time is over, after 2 hours, we will destain this solution. Now uh, we kept 2 hours in staining solution, uh, we, as we can see the staining is uh, over, like we can see the gel completely turned into blue. So we remove the solution. Then I am going to add de-staining solution. And I will keep this on a rocker for 2 hours for de-staining. So the composition contain uh, for 100 ml of uh, de-staining solution, uh, 40 ml of water, double distilled water and 40 ml of methanol and 10 ml of uh, glacial acid. So I am going to keep uh, this on a rocker. We have run the gel and uh, stained, right? stained and uh, de-stained. Now we will capture the uh, gel image. So we can see manually also but uh, for record purpose we have to capture it through gel dark. So this is the Agenda uh, imaging system from BioRad. So I will show you how to uh, take the capture the images. So let So here uh, we will use a white tray. There is another one uh, uh, grey or uh, uh, UV tray is also there. So there uh, you can see any fluorescent one or uh, stained with the ethidium bromide or blots, chemiluminescent blots you can use that. But uh, for uh, normal protein imaging we can use uh, this white ray. So I am going to keep the gel on this one. So we have to open properly. 
this is very important step you have to align the uh, tray in a proper way so otherwise it will show error so once it is over you just push it back so we have to log on to account so this is a uh, sds page you can select the application whatever you want so here nucleic acids protein gels bloods three different uh, categories are there so we are observing here protein gels protein gels stained with the kumasi blue or you can use white tray we are using white tray so this is the right tray you can use kumasi blue stained one uh, gray tray also but uh, we are using as we are using white tray so we will use kumasi blue so auto optimal then i will ask for capture so it will take uh, one to three minutes based on the signal intensity so as we can see it is optimizing the uh, signal intensity you can minimize this one also so that you can see the gel image so now it is over if you want to do any modifications to image for suppose you want to decrease or increase the signal intensity so this kind of uh, changes you can do so if you want to send this gel you can have send and save if you have any uh, drive connected to this one you can send directly to this one uh, that thing so for image analysis part uh, we will show in the upcoming video uh, how to analyze the what this band of interest correspond to which molecular weight so we already loaded the molecular weight one so we can easily find out using image lab uh, software in this video uh, we have learned that uh, how to prepare a sds page gel and uh, how to run it what are the precautions need to be taken while uh, preparing the gel and uh, how to observe how to record the gel using uh, uh, gel documentation system so i hope this will give you a gist of how to uh, prepare and run a sds page gel and analyze the protein sample so with this demo uh, we we have shown you the different steps what is required to prepare the acrylamide solutions and then how to uh, pour how to prepare the resolving gel and the stacking gel how to load the samples and then how to perform the electrophoresis and then ultimately we have also shown how to do the staining and de-staining i hope that the, this demo video could be helpful to understand the electrophoresis uh, the vertical gel electrophoresis so with this we would like to conclude our lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the imaging and the staining and de-staining and how to analyze the gel uh, pictures what you are going to capture just after the electrophoresis so with this i would like to conclude our lecture here thank you